spoke a fair bit um, about, you know, um, it's almost like you were alluding to potential challenges or pitfalls of complacency or something with this high gold price, and mm -hmm. you made a, uh, you alluded to safety, and then you were talking about um, not, we've got to be patient with M and A and whatever mm -hmm. else. What, what's can you kind of narrow that down into what you see as the key challenge with for a company like yourself with a rising oil price? Um, I think historically, if you look at the last time the gold price rose to in 2011 to 1900 US dollars an ounce, there were, there was a frenzy of M&A, and I think it results in 85 billion dollars of impairments. So, um, you know, there's that saying: buy low, sell high. But it's not that easy to determine what's low and what's high. Um, we have a tendency in this sector to do M&A when the price is rising. Um, and if we really are in a cyclical industry, then maybe we should be doing things which are not popular um, and, and uh, doing them when you know, people are buying things, maybe you should be selling things. And when people are selling things, that's when you should be buying things. So why should you be doing it at the moment? not popular. We're making money, <laughs> banking it. And, and you know, we get all this pressure from people saying, well, you know, what, you know, why don't you, why don't you do M&A? Why don't you grow? And my answer to that is we're making loads of money. We can sustain that. Uh, we're a high margin business. And, and there are two things that I think you need to create a deal which is accretive to your shareholders, our shareholders. One is you need a motivated seller. And there are not many motivated sellers out there at the moment. So you need some sort of stress in the system. That was 2015-16. There was real stress. Um, and or, preferably and, but or, you need to take a geological view that there is more gold than you're paying for today. Um, at Cow, we got both. We had a motivated seller and we, had, we found a lot more gold than was we bought. Um, but today, you've got to accept that what you're buying is probably, you know, it, 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 you're paying for the answers that you're buying today. <coughs> so the geological view of, it, are there more answers, is the key question. Um, I'm sorry. No, 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 <laughs> I was rambling on. Don't worry. Um, I was just going to ask, um, on, on the weekend, Bill mm. Beeman was talking about how, you know, that, you know, Rancorp and, uh, Rancorp Rand and Corp, Corp um, have created a gap, you know, for a, companies like, you know, yourselves and Northern Star to sort of scale yeah, up. Yeah. Do you still, you know, would you agree with that or do you still think that the mid-tier is sort of the sweet spot? Mid-tier space has been where the best shareholder returns have been generated. I have yet to meet a shareholder of ours who said to us that it's an impediment to invest <coughs> in us because of our low level of liquidity or, or, or size. Sounds like you're not interested in some of those you know, such as St. Barbara would say, you're still looking for a merger of equal, that, that, well, we're open to that. Like, uh, like it sounds you have, like you're happy with what you've... Again, I, I just go back to the, the filters we're using. Does it make our business stronger and is it, is it a creator for our shareholders? Because just getting bigger uh, and, and potentially being dilutive to our shareholders or making a weaker business, is, it doesn't make any sense. Just on that thing, yeah. could we go back five years and your decision to invest in, in those projects, including in a century? Um, was it difficult to get funding then? Was it unpopular? Were gold projects unpopular? Yeah, so when we bought Cal in, in 2015, um, we paid $751 million. We were the highest bidder. Um, and it was more than our market cap at the time. And I guess if you talk about sort of counter -cyclic, cyc cyclicality, if that asset was sold today, there'd be loads of buyers or bidders. We put in a bid on Friday afternoon. Uh, we're called in, I think, on the Saturday morning met the barrack representative who said congratulations to the owner of Cal, sign this document. We think, oh, maybe we've overpaid. <laughs> but, you know, and then $751 million was more than our market cap at the time. Uh, it's proven to be great, but it's, it was a really counter-cyclical uh, move. Assets like Cal today would be much, much more competitive if they were tendered. Some interesting moves getting out of well, not getting out of entirely for Jingo, but moving into Ernest Henry, investing in Mount Gordon, the mm. chess game. Right? We've always said six to eight assets is, we think, the right number. We're not convinced that gold is a scalable business. Uh, so keep improving the quality of your asset base. And Mount Gordon, perhaps? 
uh, improving the quality of our asset base. So we don't have, I mean, Mount Rawdon's been a terrific asset. I think Nick Georgetta started it with an eight year mine life. It's going to be, it's currently got a defined mine life that will be 26 years. Not going forward, but since it started. So, you know, given that there are those risks that some of the industry will get carried away mm. uh, and will want to potentially grow, um, is that an opportunity then to, to divest assets and to take advantage of, uh, <coughs> of uh, take advantage of them? It's, it, I, I think you'd have to say in this current environment that it's going to be easier to sell assets than to buy assets. Mm. That's not to say we're looking to sell any assets, um, but you're right. Um, it's, it's, a, it's a market where it's difficult to find those accretive, uh, quality, quality improving deals. I think the area which is quite interesting is the earlier stage stuff, the, the sort of exploration and development assets, the more junior end of the market, which are still, are still struggling to get access to capital. So. You know, the big downside for us is the gold price keeps going up and everyone starts funding those things much more freely. Yeah. And what about the processes that, you know, the, the new barrack and the new new mm -hmm. are going to have? I mean, are those, <coughs> do you expect there to be assets there that will meet your criteria or, will, or potentially not? I, I think all indications are that the assets which they potentially are going to divest of would, but it will be a competitive process. Mm -hmm. Um, Jake Mungari, mm -hmm. um, what is the company's view on that at the moment? It seems to be a bit of a problem child, if I understood that correctly. I don't think it, I think a problem child is on a relative basis. We, we've been very candid in saying that Mungari has not delivered what we wanted it to deliver and what we believe it can deliver. Uh, as we explained on the site visit on Monday, it's, a, it's, a, it's got an endowment of a, over two and a half million ounces in resources. The challenge is that the it was producing you know, 170,000 ounces when Frog's Leg was in its in its prime. Um, we've now got to right size and optimize the operation for 120 to 130,000 ounces. Uh, the, the the all in sustaining costs at Mangari were not not that bad last year. They were high in our portfolio, but they weren't that bad for this region. Um, and it made net cash. It made 37 million dollars of net cash last year at a much lower gold price. So we're working on bringing the costs down uh, and obviously uh, increasing that margin if the gold price stays high. Is, is, is there any assets in WA, am I right? It is. Would it be perhaps easy for the company to take a look at that then and go, um, actually that's one of the easy ones to divest, that would solve a bit of a, a headache for us? Uh, I, I think we see value. Uh, we see value in the exploration, we see value in the optimization. I'd say we haven't been happy with the way we've operated the asset to date. And that's just a, you know, we, we want to be candid, we want to be upfront. We think we can do better. Can we go to safety? You mentioned sure. that as your number one priority. There have been six uh, fatalities yeah. in Queensland. Quarries and coal mines. Mm. What's the hard rock sector doing differently? So we've had, uh, I, I, I can't answer that question, I, I don't know. Um, but we, the, the Queensland government's going through a safety reset. We each, all operations, including ours, are having uh, stop works. Uh, we're engaging our employees. Um, you know, the real challenge for us as an industry and as a company is to make these, these conversations really meaningful. Um, and that continues to be a challenge. Um, but we fully endorse the need to put safety first and, 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 and be world's best at that. And looks like you can do that and be a low-cost producer. We certainly think we can, mm. and we are. I told a colleague before about just optimising your asset base, mm. and you were talking about you know the assets that could fall out of the, the rain gold and, mm. you know, and all that kind of stuff. I mean, it sounds like you just that's that could be a bubble, but it's not really. It doesn't sound like you're overly enthused. No, we're 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 enthused. We just want to put it through those lenses. Um, you know, we we want to make sure that we look at things rationally and strategically and that they're accretive to our shareholders because buying another uh, good asset from one of the majors would be fantastic but overpaying for it and having to do a big impairment uh, in two years time would be a bad thing and I think that's the challenge at today's gold prices if you're buying an asset and let's just say 
heaven forbid the gold price doesn't keep going up. <laughs> Let's say it goes down. Uh, I know it's something we don't want to think about. But, but um, if it does go down, if you haven't bought something that there's value creation opportunity, uh, from, you know, you, you're going to be having an impairment. And shareholders are quick to um, forget that, you know, that it, it was bought at the time when the gold price was going up. So, you know, you go back to 2011, 2012, there were plenty of impairments across the gold industry where shareholders took a pretty jaundiced view of it. What was the um, reason for the tie-in with the, with the safety, what, what you're mentioning there about, is it like companies can get so carried away that they can lose that kind of thing? Or? No, I just wanted to highlight the fact that with all this, this money being made and, and cash flow and all the success that gold companies are having and being lauded by shareholders is doing a great job, uh, nothing is more important than safety. Are you interested in any other commodities than gold? We obviously have some copper exposure through Ernest Henry, but we, we're a gold company. 